Thank you for joining us for our New Year, New You Nutrition Virtual Talk. We're excited to be here with you guys. We're going to keep it pretty short today. Um, we will go over questions at the end. So if you want to, if you have questions as we're going, go ahead and, and put them in the chat. And then you don't have to try and remember what you wanted to ask. And then we'll touch bit, um, back on them afterwards. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. I think it's this one. Okay. Can everybody see the new year, new you screen? Chris, I can't tell, I can't see the chat now, so. Okay, awesome. Yay, it worked. Okay, so welcome to the New Year, New You Nutrition Talk. Um, I'm Tirsa, the owner of CrossFit Preferred. Most of you guys know me. Hi, I'm Megan. I manage the front desk. Well, you do a little bit more than that. Yeah. She, she freaking runs the place, really. <laughs> I'm just there for kicks and giggles. <laughs> um, okay, so today what we want to talk about is, first of all, I know I've worked with a lot of you guys in the past. We're super excited to have Megan on board. Um, she's actually going to start taking on nutrition clients and helping me out in this new year. Um, she's got a great background with, um, she just got her precision nutrition certificate, and she's experimenting helping people. And uh, if you guys know her, you know that she's pretty diligent with those macros and has seen great success. So we're excited to have her on board and to teach you guys some of the things that she's learned over the years. Um, <clears throat> at CrossFit Preferred, we believe in a habit-based approach to nutrition, which supports a lifestyle change, not a quick fix. So uh, you guys have heard me say that. The whole point of this is to help you guys to see how this can come become part of a lifestyle and not just looking for a means to an end. Um, we do have our six week challenge that we're kicking the year off with, which some of you may look at as this is a means to an end. However, most of you who have done it in the past know that as time goes on, you're realizing that these are things that you can continue on throughout the year and also fall back on if um, you know your weight starts creeping up or if you're not hitting the, the goals that you're looking for throughout the year, you can always fall back on those habits that we teach you during the nutrition challenge every year. So um, that's really what we're, our goal is to help you guys fit this into your lifestyle and not just look for a quick fix. So uh, how many of you have heard the phrase, new year, new you? At the end of each year, beginning a new year, we tend to make resolutions in the hopes of becoming a better version of yourself. Uh, new Year's res resolutions is a common tradition in which a person resolves to continue good practice, change and under undesired traits for or behavior to accomplish a personal goal. Um, how many of you have tried setting that and then, you know, you do really good for like a month and then you're just kind of like, well, well, you know, <laughs> I'm done with that. Let's try something else. Um, here we want to just kind of keep it simple and we'll teach you about that today. Yep. So that is the goal there is to keep things simple. Um, so we're going to talk about that. So let's look at some of the statistics. So 80% of people that make a New Year's resolution um, only 8% actually achieve them. Um, usually it's because we're setting unrealistic goals for ourselves or we don't have any way to track it or we're not, nobody's holding us accountable. So in 2014 report, 35% of participants who failed their New Year's resolutions added, admitted they had unrealistic goals. And that's a very common thing. 33% um, of participants didn't keep track of their progress. Like, how do you know if you're, that's like um, a lot of you, are members of our gym. That's like coming to the gym. Mike, I'm going to use you use an example because I can pick on you a little bit. Um, that would be like you come into the gym and back squatting every week, but never putting in your score, never putting in what weight you're doing and having no clue where you are exactly. If you're making progress, if you're not, um, if you're not tracking in some way, we don't we can't tell if we're getting better and we don't have any motivation to try harder because mm -hmm. we don't know. Um, so about one in 10, uh, people claim that they made too many resolutions yeah. and that's what we're going to focus on today. <clears throat> 
So when it comes down to setting goals, you need to start with a personal assessment. Hopefully you guys downloaded the PDF that goes with this um, class tonight. And if you didn't, it is in that email that I sent out and you can do it later. Um, but what I want you to do is take a little bit of time to do that assessment that is on the PDF. Um, you don't have to do it right now. Maybe some of you have already done it, but we're gonna go over that. Um, so what does success look like to you? And that's gonna be different for everybody. Come this way a little bit, you're kind of out of it. Um, what does that look like to you? And that's a personal question. And what do you want to achieve in this year? Um, remember that we're trying to focus on one thing at a time. So common personal goals include <clears throat> losing weight, we see that a lot, um, increasing muscle, um, maybe saving money or accomplishing um, a physical or um, academic goal. Um, there's a lot of different ways to make improvements. The strategy for goal setting begins with the big picture. So you need to think big picture. What is my overall goal? What do I wanna accomplish at the end of this year? Um, a year goal is a long time. Yeah. So we suggest if you do have a goal that you wanna accomplish at the end of the year, Breaking it up into micro goals, setting yourself up for success by having small goals that you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, so take a look at the big picture and then break it into smaller components to help you to feel successful. Mm -hmm. um, so when you break things up into small pieces, we need to be able to measure that and be able to track it. Mm -hmm. Um, what, so think about, um, like for me, I've had lots of goals in the past. One goal that I'm working on right now is I'm trying to get better at my gymnastics in the gym. I'm trying to get better at my bar muscle ups in particular. So that is my overall goal. Get better at bar muscle ups so that I can do ring muscle ups. My micro goals are to meet with our coach Andy once a week and to do the accessory work that he has given me three times a week so that I can help build the strength that I need for that goal. Now, if all I said was I have a goal to get bar muscle ups, <laughs> actually, I can give you an example for that. I've had a goal for many years to get ring muscle ups. Have I done anything to get better at ring muscles, muscle ups? No, yeah. because I didn't break it up into smaller goals. All I said is I wanna get ring muscle ups by the, by the time the open comes around. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't put a plan in place. Um, so making those little goals and then accomplishing them gives me the confidence that, hey, I'm getting better. So each time I meet with Andy, sometimes it's a little frustrating, but then he reassures me and he says, nope, you're getting better. Mm -hmm. You're better than you were the last time. And then that gives me the confidence to keep going. Yeah. So think about what, work, what has worked well in the past and what didn't work well for you. Um, the other thing with component that you need to keep in mind is time management. How much time is this goal going to take? Let's say your goal is to um, eat healthier. So when you think about eat healthier, that's a broad topic, <laughs> but it takes time to do that. You have to allow time to plan your meals, to grocery shop and to prep your meals. Mm -hmm. If you don't allow time for those three things, the success rate of reaching that goal of eating healthier is going to drastically drop. Mm -hmm. So take a little bit of time, go over that assessment, um, um, picture what that overall big goal is and how you're going to break that down into smaller goals. So right now we're going to share a couple tips with you on a good way to start setting your goals. Uh, tip number one is ditch the all or nothing. Uh, we live in a society where we want quick, quick, fast results. Uh, but really the truth is if you're looking for good results, it doesn't come quick. It's, it takes time, you know, it took time to say you want to lose 10 pounds, you know, it took time to gain that it's going to take the time to lose it. So the consistency to stick to your goal and to work at it slowly, you know, one week at a time and that will help. Yep, definitely. I love that. Um, that analogy, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't gain 10 pounds in a day. We're not going to yeah. lose 10 pounds in a day. Right. Um, there's, there's likely uh, many of you have, who have tried to make more than one resolution at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact is, is that when we focus on one, changing one thing at a time, we have a much higher success rate, 80% actually mm -hmm. success rate um, in a year. Whereas if we add 
another thing. So if you're just focusing on two things at a time, that drops down to 35% success rate in a year. And by adding a third thing, it drops to 5%. So it's crazy how much harder it is by just adding one more thing. And that's why we really try and focus on just the one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, if you need to focus on one thing at a time set your, to sell, set yourself up for success, but there's many areas that you want to improve on, then just you've, you've got to do trial and error. You've got to figure out what, what one is the most important to you. And once you find success in that, it's going to give you the confidence that you need to move on to another area. Yep. And tip number two, uh, start with a clean slate. Uh, there are likely several goals or resolutions that you've attempted in the past. Um, or diets or anything like that. You want to forget all those and rethink, reassess, and start new. And then that way, starting new and starting small and consistent will help you reach those goals. Yep. Um, Something that I tell people that I meet with, um, nutrition clients, is to throw the word diet out the window. Mm -hmm. I never, I try really hard not to use that word because diet to me um, means a short, quick fix. It's, yep. it's not sustainable. It's not maintainable and restrictions. Yep. And, and by restricting. So, uh, I try really hard not to re- follow a restrictive diet. Mm-hmm. Nothing is off limits. Everything is, is, um, on the table in moderation. Yep. So, um, in fact, two thirds of people that start diets will regain the weight plus some, yeah. um, within a year, which is crazy. And I've seen that happen. Like before I started macro tracking, before I started nutrition coaching, um, I've told some of you guys this before. We have five kids. I gained weight, lost weight many times. Yep. Um, and it was the the quick fix that I was looking for to help um, lose the weight. And if I couldn't lose it within a few weeks, I was done. Um, but I yo-yoed for years, mm-hmm. up and down, up and down. I had a very unhealthy relationship with food yep. because of it. Um, And then once I found macros and realized that I could have the things I love and still get my results as long as I was willing to do it in moderation and and take the time to plan, Mm -hmm. um, that gave me a much more healthy relationship with food. I no longer yo-yo. And that doesn't mean I'm perfect. I've got Mm -hmm. lots of, I still have a very strong sweet tooth. I love to bake. I have five kids. We, they bake and, you know, (laughs) it's just in the house that I don't follow that 25 gram sugar rule, but um, but it means that it's, I've made progress and I can view food in a healthier way. Mm -hmm. So give yourself a break, put those negative experiences behind you, um, move forward with a clean slate. Yeah. Um, so a couple things that you can do to help do that is clean your fridge out. We're going to teach you how. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is remove anything that's expired in your fridge that (laughs) some of you are like, uh, that would not be me. Well, that is me. So, because I don't tend, I don't tend to take the time to do that. Um, go through, throw anything away in your fridge or freezer that that is expired. That's the best way to get started. And then things kind of. I feel like when my fridge is cluttered, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, like I don't know what to eat, and so then I go to the pantry. Yeah, is kind of my thing. Right. So get those things out of the way. Um, check the sugar content in your foods. So uh, the. American Heart Association actually recommends that kids and women eat 25 grams of added sugar or less. I don't know if you guys have looked at a food label lately, but you can find 25 grams of sugar in one yogurt. Mm -hmm. So paying attention to the the amount of sugar you're eating and maybe saving that for the things you really, really love. And let's say, you know, 25 grams, grams of sugar is unattainable for you. That's, there's no way that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You don't have to throw in the towel. Set a more realistic goal. Maybe it's 50 grams. And then try using an app to track your food and see where you're naturally landing. And then look for ways to eliminate the foods that are a little bit higher in sugar or replace them with things that are similar, mm-hmm. but just have lower sugar. Um, the next thing is check the fat and sodium content of the food. So fat and sodium are stabilizers. So our food companies use them to help the shelf life of our food. Um, So we wanna eliminate the processed foods that are loaded with fat and sugar and move to a more whole food approach. And last one is strategically place your whole foods in the fridge where you can see them very easily. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) If you looked at the top uh, shelf of my fridge right now, you would see um, 
Fit Aid, um, those caffeine ice drinks, oh, yeah. uh, almond milk. Like you would see some things that maybe I could I could make mm-hmm. it better, you know. Um, but put those things that are that are better choices on the top shelf. And that way, when you open the fridge, it's right there. You're, you can, it's a lot easier to make better choices. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things that Megan and I, I'll let Megan kind of tell the ones that she likes, but um, we will try and find sauces or um, dressings that are mm-hmm. lower in sugar, lower in fat and sodium, yep. um, but still have good taste. So I'm going to share one with me, with you guys. And I've talked about this a lot. So Bolt House Farm dressings, they have tons and tons of, of, um, options, mm-hmm. flavors. Um, this one's just the ranch one, but my bottom shelf of my fridge is full of them all. The one I love the most, I cannot find. It's the salsa ranch one. <laughs> I can't, awesome. I don't know if they discontinued it or what, but I can't find it. So this is one of my favorites. If you guys haven't tried this, it is in the um, produce section of your, of your grocery stores over by the bagged salad. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel guilty about using these. Yeah. I can use a lot and it's not, I don't have to skimp on yeah. these. So I love those. Yep. Um, my favorite is, my old time favorite is Dave's Gourmet. Um, unfortunately, the only place you can find it is Whole Foods. So <laughs> I hardly ever go to Chandler. So yeah. I don't really have, haven't gotten it in a while. But I really like, um, you get these at Target, the Sir Kensington's. These are pretty good. They're a little bit higher in the fat content, which works out good too, because near the end of the day, I tend to I tend to have extra fats at the end of the day. So this is a nice little filler of that and they taste really good. They have a lot of flavor. So yeah. you don't really need a lot of it. Yep. They can go in anything. It, yeah. You can add it to a burger. You can add it to veggies. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes in, I've got another. So this one is a chili lime cream. Yeah. And this one, I don't know how to say that. Yeah. It's a Korean inspired sauce. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, but there are tons of sauces out there that are going to be a better choice for you. So if you guys want more ideas, we've got more ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, but start paying attention when you're in the grocery store looking for um, substitutions for some of your higher sodium, higher fat sauces. All right. And then the third tip is make a plan for success. Uh, we know that success leads to continued motivation with achieving your goals, uh, finding success in your first few weeks. So you make a short goal and you hit that goal and you're like, okay, well, that was awesome. Now what? And then another shorter goal and then go from there and slowly you'll make that build to your, to achieving your bigger goal. Yep. Um, if I always notice if my um, nutrition clients are doing what they're supposed to be doing, <laughs> because I'll hear from them a lot. Yeah. And I want to hear from them a lot in those first few weeks, because it is so important that they mm-hmm. feel success in those first few weeks, because that's what's going to motivate them to continue on. Yeah. So if you guys are struggling with that, set a goal that you know, 99.9% sure that you'll actually achieve that goal, because mm-hmm. that success will help you to be motivated to continue on and then set another goal like Megan was saying. Yep. Um, so how will you measure success? Um, think about what what is the missing puzzle piece for you? Going back to our goal setting, what is realistic? Are you setting yourself up for success or failure? Do you have a good support system? And how will you stay accountable to your goals? So keep your goals somewhere that are that that it's visible. I know a lot of people will write it on their um write it down and put a sticky note on their bathroom mm-hmm. mirror. Um, I've in the past used pictures that of myself that um, I liked the way I looked and I'll, I'll put it on my bathroom mirror. I know people have done that before, um, but how will you stay accountable and how will you stay motivated? Sharing your goals with a friend or a family member really, really helps with that accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody knows that you have a specific goal and there's somebody that you talk to on a pretty regular basis, could be a spouse, a sister, a, f- a good friend. If they know you have a goal, they're going to ask you about it. And you're not going to want to tell them, oh, I didn't really do that good this week. You're going to want to be successful and not have to, you know, yeah. hide under a rock, <laughs> <laughs> avoid their calls or texts, you know, <laughs> like you want success. And so that your, your chances of reaching those goals are going to be a lot higher. Yeah. So um, another way to help is to find an app that will help you track your goals. Uh, one of the apps that we love 
for helping you reach your nutrition goals is my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. My fitness pal has a huge database. It's very user friendly. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it. But um, once you do, it remembers the foods that you eat and it's very, very quick and easy to add the foods that you eat on a regular basis. Um, There's my fitness pal has come a long way yeah, since I started using it. There are so many recipes that are already built in. Yep. Um, so you don't have to like add recipes. You can quickly look for, mm-hmm. um, search the name and the, the recipe will pop up and the macros will pop up. Yep. Um, so I really like that because I remember when I first started macro tracking, it was a headache. <laughs> it was really hard. I had to like put recipes in and it was super, super hard. Yeah. Um, so finding a way to track your progress um, and have that accountability. Yep. So we provide that for you guys. We're excited to announce that our New Year New You Nutrition Challenge starts in five days. Um, Some of you have already signed up and some of you haven't. If you are thinking about kickstarting your nutrition program and making a change in this new year, this is the perfect way to get started. We give you support. We give you recipes. We give you weekly challenges as well as weekly check-ins. We give you access to Um, a coach who has a lot of experience tracking, a lot of experience with trying new recipes and new things. We teach you how to eat out on a macro plan. You don't have to track macros in order to participate. We meet you where you're at, but it's just like having that coach in your corner, just like you do when you come to a CrossFit class. You've got someone in your corner that knows what they're doing and you can come to them and put it on them to help instead of trying to figure it out on your own. It just makes it 10 times easier. Um, Our challenge kicks off this Saturday with uh, in-body scans and our nutrition workshop. If you're not going to be here or you can't make it, we will um, accommodate you and find a time to fit you in later in the week. Um, that We start actually tracking our, our points and stuff on Monday. Yep. Um, it is a six-week challenge, so it ends Valentine's Day weekend, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. Like that. <laughs> so you guys are going to look in hot for Valentine's yeah. Day. Um, but what we do is we focus more on healthy habits and less on just yep. what we're eating. We're trying to get better at um, overall. So how much sleep are you getting? How much exercise are you getting? Are you How much sugar are you eating? Are you eating fruits and vegetables? Are you drinking water? Those kinds of things. Yep. And we use an app to track all those points. So it makes it really easy to be able to check off those things things throughout a day. You just open your app and say yes or no to all those things. And then it keeps track of all your points for you. We have three ways to win. So your chances are pretty good. Yeah. Um, we do a body scan at the beginning and at the end. So we're have, we have an overall body composition winner. We have an overall points winner. And like I said, we put you guys on a team. So we encourage that team camaraderie. So we have an overall teams winner as well. This year, we will have four teams. So one in four chance, guys. Yep. You can win. Um, anyway, so we are very excited about that. If you guys want to participate, Chris is going to put the link to register in uh, the chat. Mm-hmm. Some of you have already registered, but um, maybe you haven't clicked on the link. So make sure you click on the link, purchase the ticket that is required to participate mm-hmm. so that we can put you in a team. And we are going to recap those three um, tips that we were giving you. You want to go over that? Yeah. So for the first tip, uh, ditch the all or nothing mentality. Focus on one thing at a time. Uh, Tip two, start with a clean slate. Let go of the past uh, and give yourself a fresh start. And then for the third tip, make a plan for success. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for joining our New Year New You Nutrition Talk. We are going to, I'm going to unshare my screen really quick, and then I'm going to look in the chat and see if there's anyone that um, has any questions. And if I don't, if, let's see, how do I get out of this? There we go. Okay, let's see. Any questions? So if you guys want need to unmute yourself and ask a question. I'm happy to help with that too. So far, I don't see any questions in the chat. So um, if you guys have any questions, unmute yourself. I see a few more people that have joined. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? And Kimberly, yay, and Phil, cool. All right, so if you guys have any questions, um, you can text me or Megan um, or message us on Facebook. 
And thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to next month where uh, we, I don't know what we're talking about yet, but I will let you know. I'll keep you posted. Um, And hope you guys have a good night. Bye. Thanks.